Welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thanks for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Guys, as always, okay. these episodes are sponsored by Cardsphere, the best place to buy, sell, and trade magic cards online. I love it. I use it all the time. You should, too. Their link is in the description down below. Uh, but let's get right into it, Will. Let's jump right in. We're going to do our random card of the day. Agreed. Three. Concur. Two, one. <laughs> That was exciting. <laughs> All right. Ashes to ashes. This is from where are you from first? Fifth edition? Uh, fourth. Fourth? And the dark. Show enough. The dark, technically, I yep, guess. The dark would have been first. Yep. So it is a sorcery for one colorless, two black that says ashes to ashes removes two target non-artifact creatures from the game and deals five damage to <laughs> you. Interesting. How do you feel about that? Well, <laughs> I don't like it. I don't know if I like it. I kind of do. Um, it exiles two non-artifact creatures for oh, three that is mana. Exile back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is insane. Five damage to you is a lot. It's a quarter of your starting life total, but holy crap, is that a powerful card for three mana? For a f I'm not so upset about the fourth of my life though. Although in black, I don't know. I like this. I think it's great. Clearly, because it was in a tournament's winning deck, a pro tour collecting set thing. It could have been a one-up. It could have been sideboard. Too. You don't <laughs> could know. Could have been sideboard. You don't That's know. Fair. That's um, fair. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty good, actually. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I dig it. I mean... I think there's better removal. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly in draft, there's better removal. This is much better, I feel like, in Constructed, when you know what the threats are going to be, so you can choose the best threats to get the best value for it. I actually it. disagree. Do you really? I think this is better in Limited. Interesting. Um, Why? So... It removes. I mean, obviously, you save this until their bomb is out. Yeah, of course. And then it, it like totally flips board parity, right? I mean, it does. You swing yeah, so far ahead. You take their biggest thing, and then the next biggest thing. That's fair. Dope. I think the the worry with me is the five life uh, in limited because it's a lot mm -hmm. more like swingy back and forth a lot of the times. So like you'll sure. get your life total a little bit lower before you actually lose more so in limited instead like in constructed you can lose and not lose any life technically there's a lot of decks that pull random crap out but I mean, like yeah. i i don't know i i like this more uh in constructed funny enough but either way i think it's great yeah no i think this is absolutely i think it's a solid card um but no i do i mean in limited removal is stronger than constructed but i think that um taking out two things in a limited sense is probably it way is a stronger. huge swing. There are more decks in constructed that are <clears throat> going to be able to recover quicker. In limited, yeah. you kind of get to that that top point mm -hmm. and hopefully have built your game up enough to you can where you can smash through and win and stuff like that. And a lot more often, the opponent is going to be low on cards in the hand later in the game. So if yeah. you use this, there is no recovering a lot of the time. Yeah, you just that's force fair. them into a two for one. Yeah, no, that's fair. You know, they didn't. Get the I will there. concede. I think you're probably right. Um, I don't know. I've never played with this card. I no, I haven't either. I had no idea that this existed, but yeah. it's kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. I really like it. It's dope. I also really, really like the art. Yeah, it's it's, it's the throwback. Very, it's hand drawn. It's cool. It's watercolor. Very like minimalistic. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's very the dark esque. For sure, you know, it's like I mean? less is more. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Drew Tucker was the illustrator. Would it be there, Drew? Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mister Tucker. Killing it. Um, yeah, <laughs> guys. Cool. cool card of the day. We are gonna talk about Guilds of Ravnica. Oh, we're to back. nobody's surprise. Uh, so the boys are back in town. Guy, okay. We have said this already. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get this out of the way. That Ra okay. this return to return to Ravnica, we yeah. felt needed to be very, very, very good. Oh, it's gotta knock um, it out of the park. My take on it, and I think we agreed on this point, was that obviously there's a lot of nostalgia surrounding the original Ravnica. Sure, it's fairly unfair for a new Ravnica set to ex to be expected to beat that. But Return to Ravnica was also pretty good, and I think this kind of needs to sit somewhere in the middle. It's so. Re Return to Ravnica started strong, I think. There's a lot of hype. There was a lot of buzz built around it. Yes. And, and we got the Dragon's, Dragon's Maze. Maze. <laughs> <laughs> and Dragon's Maze was less good. That's mm -hmm. one way to say it. By a lot. Um, so I think that there's a lot of like tentative expectations around yeah. this set, which mm -hmm. I think are fair. Um, a lot of times when... I mean, when they introduce new planes there's a lot more room to play when you go back to oh, old yeah. planes you know Certainly. you have a lot of 
you know, a lot of we all have our own stories or care about the setting differently. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think they did a good job with Dominaria. If you care about the stories, I think everything makes sense there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a fun set. Yeah, and it was a good set. So I think like Limited was fun. It shook up standard a bit. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, I think it has been done well. So they can obviously repeat. Yeah, uh, Ravnica's and to me especially is an interesting one because this is one that's near and dear to my heart. I love yeah, Ravnica, same. so um, I. But no, I think that to put it in a shorter answer, I agree. <laughs> it's got to be <laughs> great. It's got to be great. Uh, they have to, in my mind, kind of. They don't have to beat it, but they have to hint at the original nostalgia of Ravnica. Yeah. The, the thing that is going to keep older players who played original Ravnica and returned to Ravnica. Sure. They're going to they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I, I want this set, right? Like, you yeah. have to hit on that. Um, There's also got to be value in the set. Yep. And we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of, like, the only cards, I wouldn't say the only cards, but most of the cards from Return mm-hmm. uh, are not, like... That's fair. You know, they don't, they're not played a bunch. They're not a lot yeah, of value. There's not a ton of value. I mean, no. there's things like uh, Sphinx's Revelation and Supreme right. Verdict, which are good. Uh, yep. Obviously, Shocklands. Right. Um, we'll, we'll get into We'll get into that. Specific. But, like, there's not too much in terms of value. You're definitely right there. Right. So um, I think, I think it has to, it has to add something to the, and this is true for a lot of new sets, but I think especially for this one, it has to add something to, like, the feature of the game, to eternal yep. formats. I want to see, like, five percent not five percent like three percent of the cards i was gonna say five might be a bit yeah. high <laughs> yeah yeah but i want to see like two to three percent of the cards played in modern that'd be great that's my hope that would be great like yeah i lands included because those will that those factor into the value of a set in the future but yeah absolutely like two to three percent of the cards i think is a good goal so you talk about a 250 card set yep that's like uh is it 250 we I can thought, actually look uh 259 yeah that's about yeah yeah that's about standard, so... Yep. Um, quick so maths. You're doing quick maths? Um, yeah, I am pretty stoked so far. Obviously, we're going to be working and talking about some of the spoilers that have already been uh, spoiled for everybody. So... Um, I, go ahead. I was going to say that's only like... It's not many cards. cards. Well, there's there's a little more than 10. Um, there's not a ton. Not we're going to touch on those, but most of this is going to be like kind of our speculation and oh, what we sure. hope to see out for of Ravnica sure. as we go through some of these cards. Yep. So that's kind of the plan. The first big thing I want to touch on, there was speculation for some reason mm-hmm. that Shocklands were not going to be in this set. Well, I mean, I kind of, I will I will defend those that thought that they would not be in the set. Um, one, they're not super pricey as far as the lands. They have steadily gone up, though. That Yes, yes. But they are not, near, they're not fetch lands. Right? That's fair. Right, um, they're not. <clears throat> I mean, uh, don't even talk about dual lands. Uh, but <laughs> not worth the yeah, conversation. Nope. nope. <laughs> um, but I mean, the the uh, the supply was out there, right? There wasn't necessarily. Uh, yes, a need. and I mean, I think so. Yeah, but you can, like uh, for very new players, some of them looking to get into modern, I I don't know. I mean, I've heard a lot of people trying to pick them up that said oh, I can't find them at my local game store or something. Yes, you can find them online pretty easily. I was gonna say. Um, card sphere. Yeah, card sphere. Um, yeah, they're they're gobs online. Like the supply's not hurting. No, it's thing. not. Uh, but I will say, I think the fact that these are not fetch lands helps them to be printed in standard. And the reason I say that is because Wizards has straight up said they didn't like fetch lands in standard because Makes it sense. slowed down. It you just had to shuffle the deck more. It slowed down gameplay. It made it not as fun to watch on stream stuff like that. Yeah, these I are guess. just solid dual lands that yeah. are like they don't require you to shuffle your deck. You just take two damage. So like, I yeah for a lot of reasons I like that they're in the set. I think it makes sense that they're in this set. Obviously, oh I mean of course it's Ravnica they're gonna be. And that's um, why I thought that they would be printed again. I also thought so. You know, they've I was, been in every Ravnica. So. I will admit, I got a little caught up in uh, some people saying that, like, ah, oh, no, they're probably not going to be in the set. And I was like, but why? And so, like, no, I started yeah. questioning, and I mean, I'm glad they're there. So I'm yeah. stoked about that. Uh, that adds to the value of the set, like exactly, you were talking about. Exactly. Um, one other reprint I want to talk about very quickly, Narc Amoeba. Uh Yeah. I love that Narc Amoeba's back. <laughs> so... Obviously, this is a Dredge All Star. Um, yeah. It's not Dredge is not being brought back, 
We know no, the mechanics are already we out. We can yeah. talk about those. But um, and so, I mean, this standard viable, it works with a few different uh, mechanics in Ravnica. So yep. it's, it's going to get played. It's mm-hmm. a great card. Um, you can cast it for free <laughs> a lot it. of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, it's neat. It's really, really good. I, I love it. I Seeing Narcomoeba and seeing uh, one of the green-black cards that we'll talk about in a second, I, <laughs> I thought they were posturing for Dredge, and I got really excited. And then so, Kevin said, nope, the mechanics are out. Let's talk about this for oh, a second. Okay. Yeah. Because you and I, we both kind of wanted to see Dredge back. I um, definitely did. But Dredge is fun. I think realistic. Realistically speaking, we were like, no, they probably won't do it, but we wanted it. Will you just make it bad? <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. So I was talking to Tyler, b- Burst of Knowledge Tyler, uh, and... Who? Shut up. <laughs> um, we were talking about Dredge a little bit, and he was like, I sort of equate it to like a, the landfall mechanic. And the, the reason he says this is because... Obviously, they're very different, but in Return Battle for Zendikar, whatever, yep. they reprinted Landfall, but they didn't make it overpowered. They just made it good right. in draft. Right. And so his argument, which does make sense, and it was similar to ours, was that if you reprint Dredge, that's fine. Just make it not as good. Yeah. So that way it's still playable in like a limited format if you really got there. But And you can have some fun with it on a standard playing field if you really wanted to. But it's not going to be a tier one deck. It's not going to be broken or anything like that. I don't. Um, I think you stick it on a, a bunch of commons and uncommons. Yeah. Don't print a dredger above three, <laughs> and you'll probably be okay. Probably. Probably. Um, but yeah. dredge six cannot happen. <laughs> oh, the grave troll. Yeah. What a great card. I love that guy. I mean, it, yeah, he's awesome. Um, mm. So yeah, uh, I am a little bummed not to see dredge, yeah. but I know that in eternal formats. Well, so here's the other thing: you. Can, if you're going to reprint Dredge, you can just, like, take some other pieces from the Eternal Formats. Ban Narcomoeba. That's true. Ban, um... Yeah, but, you know, they they say, at least, they don't like to solve a problem preemptively by banning stuff. I know, but, You know like, what I mean? That, I mean, that is one thing that is kind <laughs> of clearly would be a problem. Yeah, I mean, it definitely You know what I mean? Um, um, but I think, yeah. again, if they... My mentality, and I might be wrong. Wizards, correct me, because I know you're watching. Um, no, I feel like the the development yeah, no, team. Yeah, busy right now. So. <laughs> I feel like um, if they're like, "Oh, this card might cause a problem," we just they shy away from it now. They play it too safe. That's why we've had, in my well, mind, like kind of not great standards. No, up. we've done. They've done that in the <laughs> past. I mean, think about mental misstep. Never saw modern. Well, yeah, I guess they preemptively banned it. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, I don't know. It's it's I circumstantial. Just, it's rare. Yeah, I feel like it never happens anymore. Um, anyway, back to mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You could have fixed it. They could in the but. future. It's fine. We're it, it is probably good with what we got now. Um, <laughs> we'll go over some of the spoilers and then get into the mechanics that aren't mentioned on the spoilers because yeah. some of them some of them are here. Um, I want to talk about two first because okay. I, I wrote it down as kind of a potential um, realm for standard. So Legion Warboss is one I'll talk about. So he's a goblin, <coughs> two, two for three. Uh, it says at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a one, one red goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn. It attacks this combat if able. And it's got the mechanic mentor says whenever this creature attacks put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power so uh goblin tribal guys yeah goblin tribal might be a it's thing. coming together uh so we have one two three uh token generators for goblins siege gang mm-hmm. siege gang uh legion war boss and the two drop instigator yep yeah yeah so we have a pretty sweet Dang. little curve there where uh, you can drop like one of the goblins, sack it, destroy an artifact, or sack it, add a mana, whatever. Um, you have on turn two, instigator. Now yep. you have three goblins. Legion war boss or chain whirler. Yeah. The Legion war boss uh, on turn three spits out more goblins. Now you've got like five, right? Mm. Turn four, you drop that goblin 
was it Trash Master? Oh yeah, something like that. The like weird one off. That is good, but yeah, it gives the other goblins plus one plus yeah, one. Yeah. Yep. For it's a three three for four. Yep. It's a goblin lord. It's a goblin lord. Now your team of of five other goblins are already beefed up. War boss is beefier. Ooh. It's getting there, guys. It's, yeah, it's I kind of like that. Um, so I think a mono red goblin shell is brewing because yeah. I mean, you know, there will be more goblins in guilds. Yeah. So oh yeah, hundred percent. We only have to wait and see what more we get. Um, the second for elves. So there's already a uh, Selesnia elves deck running around standard it's like tier two mm-hmm. it's okay but it's just not it's really cute right now it's missing a thing yeah uh, i think amara is the special sauce it needs uh, amara soul of the accord <laughs> a two two for two that says whenever it becomes tapped create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink so bringing back convoke yeah one we'll talk about um she could see some play now downside to this one it's kind of big for a yeah. synergistic creature deck she's legendary um so obviously this effect would be sweet if you could stack it. You really can't. Oh my can. gosh. Yeah, you right. can, but oh my yeah, goodness. You really can't. Um but yeah, so it encourages a lot of aggression if you want to attack a lot with her and just get another body to block. Mm-hmm. She's got like built in protection, pseudo vigilance, that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, definitely. She makes a body. Uh and she works with convoke, like I just said. Yep. So I think this is kind of the engine that Elves tribal needs. It's interesting to see it in white too, because you get stuff like a Johnny. You get the um, oh no, her name. She's the angel that makes everyone big. I know Shalai that gives everybody hexproof. Voice of plenty. That's the one I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Um, and you can pump. I yep. guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was, that's her green. Yeah. Thingy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So white is a a spicy addition to the elves tribal thing. Yeah. That's a little bit off theme adding an angel in there and a Johnny, but but I mean it tech. makes sense in the deck. Yeah, you get some so. tech. Um, so those are the two I was stoked about, Kev. What about you? Um. Well, so I was kind of weirdly stoked about the Lich. I like this. I card. think it's gonna be cool. Underrealm Lich. So this is a four three for three a black and a green. This is like Dredge three. It sort of is. So uh, <laughs> if you would draw a card instead, look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Two, I guess. Dredge, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pay for life. Uh, it gains indestructible until end of turn, and you mm-hmm. can tap it. So it's got some built-in protection. Yeah. What I like about this is it's sort of, it's like a better Sylvan library on a stick. I mean, it's reminiscent of Sylvan Library because yeah. it's pay for life and it's draw three cards, all that stuff. But sure. um, what I like about this is because they go into your graveyard, you can exploit the mess out of that. Reanimator, oh, yeah. uh, tons oh, of yeah. other graveyard strategies that are going to be like loving this card. Yes, it's a five mana four three and like probably not the best card for any like crazy old formats. But I think there's going to be some really fun decks around this one. I love this card. Yeah, I think it's got some implications for standard because yeah. there was there were some cheeky limited reanimator elements yes. yep in m19 there were but i think with an engine like this you could maybe start brewing some stuff yeah absolutely um, and i mean think about how much of your deck you're going to be chugging through like oh, three cards a turn yeah minimum that's nuts like that's insane and if it is a big if because we don't know sure if dark confidant's back too yeah, that's you, you just speculation. <laughs> you just that start. Uh, that, I mean, it's Ravnica. Now's the time. That's the like the thing for me. If they're gonna reprint an old card, yeah, yeah, from a Ravnica set, that's the one I want. That's the one I want. Yeah, hundred percent. I can't confident. Yeah, I can't think of another one that I would want. And I think that would. Bring, I mean, I can, but not as much. Like. <laughs> Dark well, no, that's what I mean. Like, clearly at the top. I can't think of what I want more. Is what I should have um, said. But no, you're definitely yeah. right. I think that there could be a like. At minimum, a Golgari, uh, but it could slash other colors. But a sort of control deck where this is like an all star. I was this would that. be the end because yeah. it can have some reanimator elements if it needed to, but it really sure. doesn't even need it. If you're chugging through three cards a turn and you get to pick whatever is best for your situation, yeah. I mean, hello, this is great. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, plus built in protection, like I said, so it's going to be able to deal some mm-hmm. damage, ideally. I mean, you have some elements to make a cheeky, like, Honestly, a green black control deck where oh, yeah. you have some stupid bomb. Right. Maybe called honestly. I mean maybe that's your finisher. But uh I also really want Grizzly Salvage back, by the way. Yeah, that's a nasty I want good that card. card. 
Um, I love that card. It's just a common, but it's amazing. <laughs> like yeah, it's dope. It's really good. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's probably the card so far that I'm kind of like most excited about. Okay. Um, this one's really interesting too, though. This is a cheeky card. This is Reanimator. Yeah. Okay. Macabre Hatchery. Uh, three and two black. Uh, for a sorcery, choose a creature card in your graveyard with mana cost one, then do it again for two, and then do it again for three, and return those creatures to the battlefield. Yeah. I just think this is hilarious. I'm not saying this is a good card. <laughs> yeah, I just want to point that out. It's really cute. It's um, hilarious. So here, Tyler and I, again, we're talking about this. Yeah. Just for fun, think of like a birthing pod deck with this. Oh, wow. <laughs> How funny would that be? Like, it's not great, but, like, that's pretty cool. You get there pretty quick. And you, you would get there pretty quick. But, like, hmm. you. T- uh, I mean, it's silly. I just like it. That's all. I cannot hmm. defend this card. Not in standard, at least. But I do think it's funny. I think it'll get played. I don't think it's going to be good. I think <laughs> you could do something funky with... Oh, you know what? What? Um, this might help a squeak combo actually more Ooh. than I'm thinking now. I'll have to I'll have to work that out in my head. But there's, there's a, a lot of interesting things. With this there's card. a squeak That's combo running around standard that <laughs> spits out infinite damage. Yeah. So, er, mana, not damage. Um, is it? I thought it was damage. No, maybe I think I guess it is mana. I'll get back to you. I don't I'll know. tell the class. Tell next week uh um, so i think that something very cheeky could happen with that card that's exactly what i'm hoping for um so it, and that's all yeah. i need but it's, like, not, it's <laughs> not like as good as approach cheeky but no it's, it's cute but it's cute and um it, <laughs> and it's, it, <laughs> it's so funny um yeah so really quick uh let's run through just briefly we'll go through the mechanics obviously you sure. already mentioned convoke is back if you don't know yep. what that does you can use other creatures to tap and generate mana for a bigger creature right. that's kind of the idea right um mentor you also already talked about so we'll mm-hmm. skip over that one jump start is an interesting one it's sort of like yeah. bad flashback yeah um, the same thing so you can cast a card from your graveyard if it has jump start by discarding a card in addition to paying the cost of the actual card with jump start and then you exile that card uh so it's it is just bad flashback but you do have to discard a card exploitation reanimator strategy it's in there potentially um i'm telling you there's something for reanimator in this set i i hope there at least that there is um i mean we already have that that card (laughs) i can never say it mccrab macabre i think it's i don't think that's right because that's how i've always said it macabre hatchery i don't know zach in the corner is telling us wrong i think it yeah. yeah. Macabre. It's a French word. Yeah, that's what All I right, said. Macabre. Macabre. I was wrong. I don't know words. Um, Macabre. Whatever. Anyway, so Undergrowth is another one. It basically, literally, this was the description. It just cares about things in your graveyard. <laughs> like, that's it. Creatures specifically. Creatures specifically. Uh, and yep. so effects will happen. The one that we, mm-hmm. ne- Necrotic Wound, cares number of creatures in your graveyard, minus X, minus X, it's a removal spell. So yep. it's it's pretty straightforward. That is a good removal spell, too. It is a very good removal spell. Right well, it's replacing Fatal Push, if you think about it. Because yep. Fatal Push is about to rotate. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, Necrotic Wound in the right... Here's why I like it. more than Not more than Fatal Push, but I like it more for standard. Uh, it fits in less decks than Fatal Push. It's yeah. not a freebie removal. Um, but in the right decks, it gets stupid efficient. Interestingly, it's not great in control, which is where removal exactly. seems to be at the exactly. best. Exactly. <laughs> so control is put because blue black control again, like I've said, is mm. kind of the top dog. Yeah. A lot of people think it's mono red. Blue black control is stupid strong. Um, <laughs> necrotic wound is not necessarily the best in that. Yeah, you put creatures in the graveyard, but you're not doing it every turn. Mm-hmm. So you're really only getting minus three, minus four, which is still big, but in a uh, black red mid range deck. This card is nasty. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I think it's going to be sweet. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is surveil. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly, which is sort you of are. like scry. Uh, the one that we're looking Ish. at is sinister sabotage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's surveil one, and obviously we'll have different numbers associated with that. But yep. basically, when you cast this card, you look at the car- top card of your library, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can put that in the graveyard if you'd like to. 
Yeah. Uh, so it's it's basically scribe, but instead of putting it on the bottom of your deck, you can put it in your graveyard. Yep. That's basically it. Uh, but I do kind of like that in a lot of ways. I like it a lot. It works with um, Jumpstart. It works with yep. Narcomoeba. Yep. It's good. I think it's pretty sweet. Yeah, um, I like that one more than the others, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I would agree. I don't like Jumpstart because it feels like bad flashback. Uh, it is a good effect for cards, though. It is. Like, no, it definitely is. The I, chance to I cast like something twice is always good. Always powerful. Um, but I just, I because it's bad flashback, it right. has a bad place in my mind. Mentor, I think, is sure. going to be limited all-star strategy, 100%. Yeah. Mentor decks are going to be awesome. Um, in limited for sure. In limited, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right. Uh, Convoke is just always solid. Yeah, um, it's fine. It's Convoke is never one that was like backbreaking, but always, no. always good. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with mechanics. Um, I do Sorry, I sort of like them, I guess overall. Yeah, I'm uh, not like amazed by them. I'm not excited like I was. Yeah. Um, meh. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're okay. Uh, well, I want to talk just for a second because we do have a new Planeswalker and those are always cool to talk about. <laughs> so we'll go over it briefly. Uh, Ral, you all know him. That He's tricky back. dude. Ral, is it Viceroy? I think that's interesting. Yeah. Um, the name, <laughs> just for story sneak, but whatever. Uh, so he is a five mana Planeswalker, three colorless, one blue, one red for five loyalty. This plus one says, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Minus three, Ral is it Viceroy deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorceries you own in exile and in your graveyard. It's important. Works with Jumpstart. Yep. Minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, this emblem deals four damage to any target and you draw two cards. Um, so uh, want, the emblem is not far off. I just want to point that out. Not, not that you would always get it, but I'm just saying it's not far off from the original loyalty. Yeah, if you can protect him for three turns, that's a really strong yeah. emblem. Um, his biggest impact is Commander to me, but yes. we, we'll save that for another day. Yeah. Um, for standard, I think he's fine. Uh, yeah. He's not as good as Teferi. Correct. But I think if you don't want to do... Uh, three color control if you don't want to do america control mm -hmm. or you don't want to do blue white i think this is a good planeswalker yeah i think he's fine right you get a uh, you get card draw with the plus one and incidental removal with his second yeah so i think he, he fits a lot of necessary slots sure while not being too strong turn five yeah but i do think he's playable so. i think he's playable i think he's pretty yeah. good um i'm not amazed by him but i do like right. him Right. Uh, also, I like the fact that every card we pull up on Mythic Spoiler, the top comment is "looks like Dredge got a new toy." Uh, Wait, really? It's, yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a meme right now, basically at this point. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. I've been I've been sleeping on this. Why? Yeah, yeah. Click on the the like if you click on. Ral, no, I saw that. Oh yeah, yeah. Click on a. Uh, well, obviously that one. I'm but just, looks like Dredge got a new toy. Click on a uh, one that isn't even Let's in Dredge see colors. See if Boris Challenger. Ah, it doesn't have it. You know, you know what we got to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll come back to this. On the, uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, shiny thing syndrome. Sorry, yeah, guys. yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> I was going to talk about. Oh, good segue into the mythic edition. Yeah, let's harp on that for a second. This is a, yeah, a point so, of tension in the it resolves household a little bit. Um, okay, so there is Ravnica Mythic Edition, which is a box of twenty four packs. Uh, with each of eight uh, full art planeswalkers, alternate full art. Uh, very pretty planeswalkers. I think they're good. Uh, but it costs 250 bucks. Um, and it's yeah. only in Hasbro game stores. And right. you, well, it's a limit per store. two. Yeah, online store. And limit two per customer. Uh, thoughts, Will? I hate it. I'm going to be honest. I hate it. I love the cards and hate the concept. Um, so... Yeah, I don't understand this at all. So, when we before we opened this episode, mm -hmm. we talked about uh, Kev mentioned these maybe being a uh, like masterpiece style yes. thing. Yes, and I, was I hoping <laughs> I honestly would have liked that so much more yeah. than these being a separate product yeah, that stupid. you have to buy at two hundred and fifty dollars for less packs. For less packs, Let me just throw that out. I really, it's it's meant to be a draft specific thing, 
so that you play with these cards yeah you draft them but i hate that i it's, don't like it <laughs> like it's real dumb um that's a yeah i there's yeah. so much wrong with so, that to me the value for for these cards are going to be expensive yeah of course so you might make your money back if you buy the buy the box and just open them maybe but one that's speculating that people will want to buy the, which i mean is a pretty good spe- that's a good uh, yeah these are worth uh, for the most some of them are worthwhile <laughs> i keep revisiting i mean but these not all these cards are that expensive like liliana's about to hit a huge dip uh yeah but she does see play modern so she'll hold but some value. not a lot um she's surprisingly side, more than i she's thought. a one of or a sideboard card mardu pyromancer likes her a lot that is one deck that's tier two. Marty Parmaster is not that good. Stop. Okay. It's not tier one. I mean, it's I not defy tier one. you to tell me it's, it's tier not one. tier one. Okay. All right. <laughs> and like, this isn't the good Lily. We all know that. Yeah, definitely. This isn't a bad card necessarily. It's just not as strong and modern. Yeah. Um. But no, I don't. Yeah, I hate this product. I think it is a. This to me is the most money grabby thing they've done in a while. It is pretty bad. To me. It's pretty bad to on me. the money grab end. I again, if they had done these as masterpieces, I would have been more okay with it. Heck yeah. Um, I think that's, that's cool. fine because these are worthwhile. Like even if the cards themselves aren't amazing, like Doretti, uh, is not an amazing planeswalker. No. Uh-huh. Um, specifically this yeah. Doretti. Uh, but like the fact that you could get a masterpiece full art version, like that's cool. That's, that's awesome. Worth it. Um. And, you know, obviously there's some good Planeswalkers yeah. in here. So, like, if they had done that, would have made sense. The fact that you know you're going to get all of them in a singular product that you have to pay complete separate for, like, it's just stupid. Like, yeah. It doesn't make sense. I don't. I really don't like it. But, that being said, I'll probably get one because I want these cards. <sighs> yeah, you would. And that's the hard part. Like, that's the annoying thing about Wizards is that they pull stupid product out of their butt but I want them. It's not it's not stupid, it's just in the wrong place. Yeah. Not to yeah. me. They're t- they're hedging their bets on these being collectible. Obviously they are. Yeah, they will be. But like but not at that price point. Probably. And anyone well, who buys the box wouldn't necessarily sell these. Yeah, they might hold on to them. Although I think a lot of people will just go buy the box and sell them immediately. What we're going to see is a lot of these flood the market really early on. Yeah. And then the price is going to drop hard. Yeah. Um, if you can get this, like, the day of and sell them next day, you're golden. But if you wait a week, you've lost, I'm going to say, like, 40% of your money. Yeah. It's going to be uh, going to yeah. be interesting. I'm going to probably do, lose money. <laughs> you do get... These aren't replacing the rares in the backs, though, so you do get That's 24. True. Again, uh, not minimum. 36, 24. And you can get still foil rares and stuff like that. Yes. So I mean, there's... Minimum. There is potential to pull three. But it's like, come on, wizards. Like, this, it is money grabby. You said it right. That's all it That's is. That's how I feel. If they wanted to do a new limited product. Yeah. All right, give us a new limited product. Yeah. This ain't it, man. No, this, this isn't it. it. I mm, I don't know. They're trying real hard to push Ravnica. In some ways, I'm a, I'm appreciative of oh, that. Oh, I'm fine. Push a bunch of cards at me. Give me some really yeah. sweet reprints. A really strong set. I'm yep. cool with that. But, uh. I didn't. I didn't want that. No, I don't want that either. It's not too good. Um, yeah. All yeah. I'm, all I'm asking for, and I know it's not in Ravnica, but I'm, I, all I'm asking for is a noble hierarchy. That's all Dude, we'll want. What if? That's all we'll want. I mean, it's not gonna happen. But what if? Yeah. Not in this <laughs> set, especially. But um, yeah. the one other thing I wanted to say too is, uh, I really like the art so far for this set a lot. Ravnica's art has always been top notch. Yeah. Um, the original art had a very specific flair to it in OG Ravnica. Uh, Return to Ravnica kind of hinted at it, but not quite as much, I don't think. Um, I feel like this one's kind of in between. Yeah, a lot of the creatures... So the lands are definitely like old school, right? Yeah. Steam yeah. vents, foundry, overgrown. Like those scream OG Ravnica to me. Yep. But like 100%. the creatures... Thought Erasure right there, that's like Return. Yeah, that's return. It's Definitely. it's very like back and forth, but like Amara, like that's beautiful art. Oh, like the great. trees in the background. Oh, that's great. Ah, that's so cool. And like great. the Great Worm reminds me of OG Ravnica a lot for some reason. Uh just the art style on it. Right. I don't know. I I really like some of these. Uh the Tribunal also reminds me of OG Ravnica. 
These are things I think about. Sorry. <coughs> Shut up. We're recording. Bless me. <laughs> um, I yeah. wasn't sure how to play that. <laughs> uh, anything else that we want to talk about right now with Ratnica? Obviously, we'll be talking more and more about it because we're going to get more spoilers. Yeah. Um, but anything you want to... I want it to just slap me in the face with how good it is. That's exactly what I want. I just wanted to go... And hit me. Um, also, the... Uh, the This... The set, what's this called? Symbol. Thank you. The set symbol uh, is the Firemind's Palace. Yeah. So I'm curious to see. Right? What the Although I kind of don't like the set symbol, to be honest. Um, I like the symbol. I don't like the, the package. Yeah, the packaging, packaging is kind of terrible. Um, Let's harp back to the worst set in the world. Um, <laughs> Dragon's Base. Kamigawa? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, fallen Empires, come on. Alpha. <laughs> it's all downhill from there, It's all too. downhill from there. <laughs> oh, no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, question of the week time. Um, I have to pull up my phone. Stall. Go. Um, so, with Ravnica, uh, last time we left for the story, we'll talk about that. Things happened. Um, all right, my turn. Um, Jace, <laughs> Jace did Jace stuff. Just anyway, done. so the last question of the week um, was regarding Commander. Yeah. Uh, was it actually? Yeah, should have been. No, it was not. Excuse me. It was regarding draft advice. I forgot oh, to right. mention this at the beginning of the episode. Our Commander 2018 giveaway winner, Brian Simmons. Congratulations. Your deck is on its way. Thank you for everybody who entered. We had 82 people enter, uh, which is awesome. Great support. Do it again next month. Um, okay, right. so... <laughs> Uh, the question of the week last week was uh, regarding draft advice, which was just basically saying what's the best draft advice that you've ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, a lot. <laughs> Somebody said always play mono red. It worked well for us in Amon Get. That's I mean, all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, somebody said look at the cards people are taking to your left and right and just don't draft those colors. That is cheating. Um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Always choose the best card that's passed to you for a draft format, like in Mirrodin, specifically getting past Shatter fourth pick. Uh, so drafting to the format is the takeaway there. Yes and no. Like, what if you're... Here's the thing. If you just get past Shatter and don't get any other cards in that color and you're not, not playing that it. color, yeah. yeah, you've just... I mean, you're, you're down a pick. You but it is important. I would say, like... Like you're saying, yes to an extent. If you're, if the color's open, yeah. go for it. But I mean, like, always yes and no. Like play to value if it's yeah. there. Like shutter fourth pick is great. That's stupid good. But don't, don't reach. Yeah. Just because you see a great card, if it doesn't fit your deck, you won't play it, and you shouldn't. Don't splash. Yeah. Done. That's my spiel. Um, Planeswalking Otter said this one best. Mind your colors, but pick the rare if it's useful. Well, that's um, the same. That's the same argument. Really. Roughly the same argument, but he was he basically was saying that he goes around and tells people like, look at your rare first, obviously. Oh, yeah. uh, if it's useful, draft around it, unless you find that those colors are not open, and you know, goes on and on. I think that's true. First and second pack, but yeah, at your third, I think you need to be your deck needs to be focused in some direction. Yeah, you if need to be filling out by pack yeah. three on it, the uh, most of the time. If it's just like beatdown centric, cool. Mm -hmm. But that's a focus that you need to respect that you're yeah. playing your strength to. You can't change up what you're doing back three. Yeah. Really. Realistically. Definitely. Uh, Kenobi Kleist. Interesting name. Uh, yeah. Said, do not uh, keep, excuse me, keep an open mind when going into a draft. Don't get dead set on an archetype before you even start. Uh, I'm guilty yeah. of that a lot. I'm like, I'm going to force this deck. A lot of times that doesn't work. Um, so mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. Definitely yeah, be flexible. Sound. You you have to just take what's given to you. That's in sound advice. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. Good call. Uh, and the last one that really stuck out to me, Urzatron five thousand said bread is pretty useful. Uh, do you want to explain bread real quick? Bombs removal evasion. Uh, at, ooh, what's the A? Oh god, I forget what the. I a told is. you to explain it for a reason. I don't remember. I know. It. I forget what the A is. Um, but D is like. Dreg, Drid, Dirge, Dirge. I forget what it's called. It, D is like trash. Aggro is a. That's right. That's what I thought. And dregs. Yeah. Is D dregs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So bombs are most important. Your big scary creatures that change the game that are must. 
Glorybringer, um, Gristlebrand, uh, you know, game changing cards like that. Yep. Removal, how to kill those things, that's going to be good. You always want to have the big scary thing, but if you can't, you want to have the thing that kills it. Uh, aggro, that's how you win draft formats. <laughs> you tip your cards sideways and they punch your opponent. That's like the best way to do it. <laughs> so you want aggressive cards. Um, and then dregs. Don't you skipped draft. E also. Oh, efficient spells or evasion. Not efficient spells. <laughs> evasion. That's evasion the one to go with. That's the one to go with. <laughs> Flyers. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although giant growth is pretty good. Like some yeah, combat yeah. tricks are useful, but you want evasion more yeah. than like a Absolutely. cute trick, I think. I would prefer That's that. kind of my personal thing, just because you get a permanent that's, you know, nice. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's just me. That's not necessarily the right way to do it. But then drags don't draft drags. Um, yeah. So if you have any cool. draft advice, leave it in the comment section, yeah. as always. Uh, and the next question of the week is, what do you hope to see in Guilds of Ravnica? Um, obviously, we've only gotten a few Dark spoilers at this point. Uh, so you can say a specific card. You can Dark. talk about, you know, whatever you want. But what do you hope to see in Guilds of Ravnica? Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant is ours, 100%. Come out uh, now we round out the episode with... Our crack a pack. Yeah, buddy. Uh, sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles, a fantastic place if you are in Rock Hill, South Carolina, to pick up some cods. Yeah. Um, but we do have our gold cards. Mine is Leonin War Leader. Mine is Supreme Phantom. Cool. I'm really excited to not be opening Corset, by the way. Anyway. Why? I love Corset. It's fine. It's just I'm me. really more excited about Ravnica, though. Well, <laughs> we yeah. have to do the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh-huh. Mine's a foil. <laughs> Yours is a foil. <laughs> Three, two, one. Nope. No, but mine is real good. Uh, mine is cute. You wanted this card for trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stupid. <laughs> that was oh, silly. Wow. Mine is uh, Lena, Selfless Champion. 3-3 uh, three, three for 6. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white creature soldier token. Uh, for each non-creature token, you control. Uh, and then sacrifice Lena and creatures you control with power less than hers gain indestructible. That's definitely the pick, hundred uh, percent. So I have a good pack. Fraying omnipotence. Each player loses half their life, then discards half the cards in their Take hand, it. <laughs> and sacrifices half the creatures they control. Round up each time. Negative. Um, <laughs> that just doesn't do anything to the game state. No, it's bad. It's, it's real yeah, bad. Don't do that. Um, so my. Came down to really two picks: a Johnny's Pride Mate or Plague Mare. Ooh, Plague Mare all day, every day. Good card. Can't be blocked by white creatures. When Plague Mare enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Hot diggity, that card's good. Yeah, it's a solid creature. I love that card. Yeah, all of the the mares are pretty good. Yeah, that set. cycle is. The green one's like super good because it has hexproof. Um, if I'm not mistaken. No, I, I don't think it does. I think it does. One of them does. I don't think so. I think it, I think they do. Oh god. I don't think this is right, our Kev. post episode talk. Hold on, Kev. I don't think you're right, buddy. I might not be. I know it can't be touched by black creatures. Hexproof. Suck it. Holy crap! Yeah, oh, it's god, freaking good. good. <laughs> oh god. I mean, they're all good, but Vine Mare is like, in my opinion, the best one because hexproof is way overpowered yeah. and limited. It's five three. For four. With hexproof? Yeah. Holy crap. Um You have to be worried. I thought it was gonna be wrong. Is that <laughs> is that modern viable? No. Man. Uh, no. It's a five three that doesn't die to bolt. I mean, yeah, but you just block it, right? Like there's not with black creatures. A, like humans and stuff like that could just block it. It'd kill a lot of humans. I mean, it would. Yeah, I'd trade I don't it. No, at minimum. I don't know. I don't think it's modern viable, but In it's modern pretty green? good. There's a modern green mono deck. What am I saying? Mono green modern deck. Thank you. It's it's out there. It's coming together. It's getting there. <laughs> Dude. I like that card though. <laughs> All right, turn two. Obviously, turn one land world. Yeah, Goes obviously. Without saying. Turn two. Steel leaf champion. Turn three. Vine mare. Turn four. Galta? Galta. Yeah. Or turn four. Um, what's the card? Um, 
um, Coco into something scary and to more of these guys. Like Dude, Mono Green's got a lot of tech right now. Yeah, Mono, Mono Green's good. It just needs removal, and then it's solid. Yeah, that's true. What does it do for removal? Uh, don't we have in standard at least? Don't we have Rabid Bite or something like that? But that's just target thing fights a thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's if okay. you have a freaking Galta out, <laughs> like it's okay. It's great. Well, with Galta, <laughs> obviously. Uh, do do do. I like this card by the way, Dryad Green Seeker. Anyway, moving. Yeah, on. it's good. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Mono Green's pretty beefy right now, for sure. Uh, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, yeah Rabbit Bite. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. I'm stoked to see guilds and how that impacts standard. Um, yeah. Are you still trying to make that life gain deck, by the way? Um, I kind of forgot about it because I've been out of town a lot. It was pretty good. I'm telling you, you know what you need to add. Hmm. It's the mayor. His name I Sun Mayor? Mm. Is that her name? I don't know. <laughs> I said that with such hostility. I don't know. You know <laughs> Kevin, you're a little wiener. You didn't say anything with hostility. <laughs> uh Shield Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Shield Mayor. Yeah, Shield Mayor's good in that deck. It's really uh, sweet. Yes. We probably did we do a deck tech on it? No. We sort could've. of. Yeah, sort of. It's pretty sweet. Kevin, let's make this deck and take it to an FM. All right, cool. I'm down. Mm. Anything else you want to talk about before we head out? <laughs> um, I like that we just chill at the end of the episodes now. I'm trying to think of, fun. of a thing. Zach, you want to come hang? <laughs> Friend Zach is here. He streamed with us a couple times. Yeah, we know that because he said something. Yeah. Are we hitting him? No, I was trying to hit your guitar. Oh, I was trying to hit him. Um. Anyway, we're going to end this episode. Are My we? name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves.